Calculate the smallest force P needed to raise the 3,800 pound load. Let's take a look at what we have. We have a wedge that I'll call it the top wedge. And then we have a bottom wedge, two wedges. Uh, they're fit where I have a floor and a wall. All right, okay. So the coefficient of static friction at the contact surfaces B and E. So contact surface B is between the bottom wedge and the floor, and E is between the top wedge and the wall. Okay, it has this coefficient of static friction of 0.3. Now there's a contact between the two wedges right here. It's at C, and it has a different coefficient of static friction. Its value is 0.4. Okay, that's a lot to digest, isn't there? And we have a 3,800 pound load applied to the top wedge downward. And you want to calculate that minimum, the smallest force P needed to actually raise the load. Okay. And that minimum, the answer is 7,622 pounds. All right. All right. So how are we going to uh, estimate and solve for the, the minimum P, the smallest force P? How, do we, how are we going to get this answer? What's what's the strategy? You're going to have two free body diagrams, one for the top wedge, one for the bottom wedge. And this is a little tricky. You have to kind of know how things are going to slip, how things are going to move. Right? So in order for this uh, top wedge to move upward, what does the bottom wedge do? Does it move to the right or does it move to the left? That may seem like an obvious question, but we need to answer that question. Which way does it move? It moves to the right, doesn't it? Such that this top wedge moves up and it lifts then the load of 3,800 pounds. Armed with that information, you now know how it's sliding at B, how it's sliding at E, and actually how it's sliding at C. And now you can get a free body diagram for the top wedge as well as the bottom wedge. So make kind of on your sheet of paper, split it and put the top wedge right here and the bottom wedge free body diagrams right there, okay? All right, so let me pick it up here. So I'll put in a block, the top block. Maybe, why do I put, it makes more sense if I switch this, put the top over here and the bottom over there. All right, fine. So I'll have it this, 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 this. And a lot of us were able to say, don't forget our force P to make things happen. Don't forget our normal at B. And then we, let me get rid of this extra over here. Then we have our friction force at B. And then the normal at C, and it's not vertical, it's perpendicular to that surface. That's why it's normal. And then uh, uh, what I like to do is this, the, people were kind of getting this, dif having difficulty getting the right direction on it. it. The right direction will be this friction force at C, but let this angle at 25 degrees go to something like zero degrees or 0.1 degrees or point, you know, some small angle and it's almost flat. And then you'll go, oh, there's the normal, there's the normal. And so, yeah, the friction force at the bottom is resisting the, and the friction force at the top is resisting the sliding in too. And so then once you figure that out, then let that angle slowly increase back up to 25 degrees. At least that's one way of thinking through the process. All right. Then we'll go to the top. What did I just do? <laughs> this is the bottom. This is the top. I don't know what I'm doing here for a minute. I was getting confused. All right. Don't forget 
our load of 3,800 pound. And we have equal and opposite the normal at C. And it's going to be the equal and opposite for the friction at C, pushing it into the wall. Really, that's what it's doing. And then we have the normal at E. And then because that top block is going to slide up, the friction force F uh, at E is downward. Once we have those, then do the equations of equilibrium for the top block. So some of the forces in X for the top block must equal to zero. It's a little tedious, but what do we get? N sub C times, and let me do this, try to get this. Isn't this our angle of uh, 25 degrees? So N sub C times the sine of 25 degrees plus the friction F of C. And then maybe I try and draw that angle right there. F of C times the cosine of 25 degrees. Those are both in the positive X direction. And the only thing resisting it is N sub E. Does that make sense? At this point, we could probably replace F of C because it's at that point of slipping. We could replace that by mu sub C uh, times N sub C. All right, but that's not necessary. The most important is to get the equation down either with or without replacing F of C. Okay, some of the forces in the Y, we do the sum of the forces in the Y, we're going to get to N sub C times the cosine of 25 degrees. Then um, that's going to go up. And then coming down, we have mu sub C, N sub C. Excuse me. Mu sub C, N sub C times the sine of 25, that's down. We have mu of E, N of E, the friction at E, that's completely down. And then the 3,800 pounds down. I pause. Did I do those equations correctly? And at this point, I can look and I see that I have N sub C as an unknown in these equations. There's N sub C, N sub C. And the only other unknown is N sub E, N sub E. Two equations, two unknowns. And I can solve for those, and I find that uh, N sub C is equal to 7574 pounds, and N sub E is equal to 59. 47 pounds. It just works out that the top block, equations equilibrium, two equations, two unknowns. You can solve for those. Now you can go to the bottom block, do the sum of the forces in the x equal to zero. P is pushing it over, and then we'll have mu sub b times n sub b pushing back due to the bottom surface, and then we'll have uh, mu sub C times the uh, N sub C, the friction at the top, and then we're going to pick off the the um, the cosine of 25 degrees. I see I didn't leave enough room. I'm going to move these over. Okay, uh, and then we have plus. Uh, N sub C times the sine of 25 degrees. Equilibrium in the Y. We'll get N sub B up plus mu sub C, N sub C times the sine of 25 degrees up on the surface C. And that's equal to uh, N sub C times the cosine of 25 degrees down some of the forces in the Y. Okay, I look at it, 
There's my N sub C, my N sub C. Oh, this is kind of nice. I can then solve for N sub B. So right away, one equation, the Y equation has one equation, one unknown. And so we get five, five, eight, four pounds. And then we can move to the very last equation in the load P that is applied seven, six, two, two pounds. That's what's needed.